先生、カメロスと人類がいないって、どうやって調べたんですか There are few characters in anime that carry the gravitas and depth of the 13th commander of the Survey Corps. And it isn't exactly a stretch to say that Irvin is one of the best characters in Attack on Titan. His leadership, strategic brilliance, and inherent human conflict have made him a subject of admiration among fans. And while everyone loves him, I don't think many people at all grasp how truly remarkable Irvin is as both a person and a character. So, in this video, I'll explain why Irvin Smith is not only the best character in Attack on Titan, but also one of the best characters in anime in general. Close your eyes for a moment. Imagine being faced with an insurmountable threat, one that's not only physically daunting, but also shrouded in layers of mystery. What would you be willing to sacrifice to unearth the truth? And what do you do when those sacrifices, which involve the lives of the people you hold most dear, barely make a dent in your search for the truth? In Attack on Titan, the path to this dream requires a disturbing price. It leaves one to contemplate whether such violence and sacrifice can ever justify the end. Such transformations require leaders of extraordinary resolve. And as the narrative unfolds, we're left with a question who is strong enough to bear such pain? Burdens. Enter Irvin Smith. Born to a teacher in Walrose, Irvin's life was a dichotomy from the very beginning. He held aspirations of discovering the truth behind the walls, fueled by a world depicted in books. As a child, Irvin was never one to accept things as they were. His father painted a world beyond the walls, sparking his insatiable thirst for the truth. But why did these tales of a world beyond matter so deeply to a young boy? The worlds of parody held more than just titans, they held secrets. When whispers of the government's deception reached Irvin's ears, it was like a discordant note in a symphony. His father's clandestine theory suggested memories could be manipulated and history altered. And then the unspeakable happened. <laughs> 遠く離れた町で事故にあって死にました私の密告により父は王政に殺されたのです Young Irvin's innocent chatter led to the sinister assassination of his father, and with that loss, guilt and purpose intertwined, pushing him towards a path where his personal quest for truth echoed a greater dream humanity's freedom. Now, what would you do if you were Irvin? Would you dive headfirst into the shadows of conspiracy, or would the trauma steer you away? Irvin's journey wasn't solely about vengeance or personal redemption, it was also about a world where curiosity would. Be met with a blade where one could dream of a freedom without waking up to a nightmare. Irvin's vision was twofold transparency and prosperity for his people, and liberation from the monstrous titans that loomed outside the walls. Yet, was it the titans that were the real enemies, or did Irvin perceive another lurking shadow? <laughs> Irvin's journey was never just about humanity's freedom, nor was it just about validating a father's belief and seeking a truth so powerful that it consumed him. It was both. What happens when you're faced with the darkest side of leadership? For Irvin, this meant embracing a duality, becoming the very darkness he fought against, becoming the devil. He sacrificed countless soldiers, lied, and embraced the very essence of what he was battling, not out of cruelty, but necessity. Irvin became the Demon that humanity needed, but don't mistake his resolve for coldness. Every soldier lost, every decision made weighed on him, manifesting the sheer significance of their collective mission. Yet, when paths diverged between his personal mission and humanity's survival, we all know which Irvin chose. Each one of us holds personal ambitions, dreams that sometimes conflict with greater responsibilities. Irvin's heart pulsed with two driving forces, sometimes at odds, sometimes in harmony. 
It's a dance of two desires, one for the collective good and one for personal vindication. Irvin's resilience was fueled by moments when his childhood spirit, robbed by reality's cruel grip, surfaced in fleeting moments of hope. A commander first, a devil and a hero second. Every decision he took, every stand he made was underpinned by a singular focus, breaking the chains of oppression, not just for himself, but for the very soul of his deceased father and oppressed masses. なぜ父は真実に近づいただけで死ななければならなかったか王政の役人にも彼らなりの正義があるはずだとしかし彼らについて分かったことは一つ彼らが守りたいのは人類ではなく彼らの庭付きの家と地位だけむしろ自分たち
The scout's progress would have halted without him, yet war is cruel, often claiming those who shine the brightest before their tasks are complete. In losing Erwin, his comrades didn't just inherit a legacy, they bore the weight of his unfulfilled dream. The world saw Erwin as both a devil and a hero. He bore burdens few could imagine, and as Levi noted, even in death, they seemed poised to bring him back to his hellish existence. But maybe in his court, Erwin yearned for a simpler reward. Rest Freedom and forgiveness. Koitsu, yurushite yatte kurenai ka? Koitsu wa akuma ni naru shika nakatta. Sore o nozonda no wa ore tachi da. Sono ue, ichido wa jigoku kara kaihou sareta koitsu wo futatabi jigoku ni yobi modo sou to shita. Da ga mo yasumase te yarane to. Armin symbolized hope in a different way. While Erwin was chained to a singular idea, Armin's mind soared beyond known barriers. His idealism cast Erwin's struggle in a stark relief. In this new world, Erwin's sacrifice paved the way for dreamers like Armin. One of the series' most poignant moments sees the public, once critics, now cheer for the Survey Corps. Erwin, their steadfast leader, basks in this fleeting moment of universal love. And for me, this will always be one of the greatest moments in the show. He who had been vilified for much of his tenure was human. Every insult, every doubt weighed on him. And in this brief moment, he tasted the sweetness of universal respect. For all his monumental achievements, Erwin Smith found joy in moments. The world may remember him as the man who reshaped history, but perhaps he'll remember the world as a place where fleeting moments of happiness propelled him forward, right until his selfless end. Sometimes a hero, sometimes a devil, but always a commander. <laughs> Sisterman!